Convection drives most of the weather that we experience. This experiment is a striking visual demonstration of convection. Firstly, you'll need some hot and cold water, some food colouring, a large wide-necked jar and a smaller jar with some string attached to use as a handle. Firstly, fill your large jar with the cold water, about two-thirds full. Then put a few drops of your food colouring into your smaller jar and fill it with hot water. Then carefully put the small jar into the large jar. The hot coloured water will have risen through the colder clear water. This will have left a coloured layer on the top of the clear. The hot water is less dense than the cold water, so it rises above it. How does this relate to the atmosphere? In the same way that the hot water rose through the cold water, in the atmosphere, warm air rises through colder air. This is the process by which clouds can form and is known as convection. The ground is heated by the sun throughout the day, which heats the air above it, which then rises through the cold air above that. As it rises, expands and cools, clouds form, which in turn can lead to rain and snow. If you watch fair weather cumulus clouds, the fluffy white ones, you can see the convection going on as the top edge of the cloud bubbles upwards. The base of the cloud is always pretty flat, and that's the level in the atmosphere where the temperature is cold enough for clouds to form. If the convection in these little clouds is vigorous enough, they can grow into cumulonimbus, the towering dark clouds which give us heavy rain, thunder and lightning, and sometimes even tornadoes. Now let's try the experiment the other way around. Fill the larger jar with two thirds full with hot water. Again, put some food colouring into your jar, small jar, and then fill that with cold water. Once again, carefully lower the small jar into the larger jar and the denser, colder water will sink to the bottom. This is more like what happens in the oceans where a sea ice forms in the polar regions. The remaining water is left colder and saltier and sinks. This drives the large-scale circulation of the oceans.